Captain's Log, Stardate 7202019.0. Starship Enterprise A's Log, Admiral Sky Commanding. So basically, I got a couple short videos for you. I know Jess messaged, uh, and uh, um, a few others. So I wanted to wish my mother's best friend, Teresa, a happy 70th birthday. So Teresa and I talked today. I gave her a uh, thing of what happened with the whole ordeal with uh, me, you know, and this thing. And she said, look, she said, if there, this is the thing that my family doesn't understand. So basically she said, you can't go and lie on a protection order to get a protection order issued to get away from someone who hasn't broken the law, basically. Chloe has made many things, okay? Now, my family, who loves me dearly, knows that I command the Enterprise A, okay, right now. Enterprise D's in dock. By the way, I just saw a new show, Picard, Star Trek Picard, coming out in 2020, looks badass. So, I got a big announcement that might come to fruition Monday. I'm going to work on it, but I want to tell you about it as an option. Because I want to share with you everything going on with uh, life. You know, Jess said I need to talk more closer to the camera because the voice is, you know. And by the way, I'm not wearing a bra, so it looks good. So, okay, so I want to tell my family, uh, first of all, to my family, Dinky, I love you dearly. I know this has been exhausting just for me, but I, I can't keep dwelling on this crap, okay? Now, Dinky's kind of upset, all right? And I'll explain why. She has a right to be fully upset, you see. She's done everything you can. I've done everything I can. Nothing gets moving along, okay? So what happened is, is Chloe's basically here, okay? Everyone is pissed off that Chloe turned around, opened her mouth, and, and, and uh, as I, I said it many times over, she basically made threats against three different people. One was the neighbor next door who raped her, who raped her. She wanted to go after her and her kids. That's a no-no. Management said that. Two was a state aid employee, the APS lady. That's a no-no, but no one gives a shit about the APS lady. Three is the government officials. Again, the sheriff didn't really give two shits about it. They were more interested in the neighbor next door, and they said, look, we're going to let you go. Thing is, don't frickin' make threats again, or we're hauling you off to jail and nailing you for a felony for threats. So they put in the report, no report. The threats, you know, they just said, ah, uh, mentally ill patient. Now... And the reason I sit here in the command chair tonight is to talk to you about, you know, people sit there and say, well, what are you going to do? Well, let me put it to you this way, okay? Now, talking to a friend of mine who has connections in the housing uh, housing situation gave me an idea, okay? Now, the problem is this, all right? I try to coordinate with my family to move. Because October 1st, more likely, I'm going to be bye-bye. I could be bye-bye sooner. The thing is, I'm trying to coordinate, literally coordinate, a place to live tem temporarily, or not temporarily, but coordinate so I don't lose housing, okay, by moving. Now, the reason for it is, in the command chair, we have some problems, okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on, all right? Chloe goes makes a threat, as all, everyone knows. Gets me to lose my house. Now, the advocates turned around and can't do a restraining order because there's not enough evidence, okay? Again, family basically turns around and says, do it. You can't do a restraining order on enough evidence. I'm not going to go make up something when I can't. That's against the law. Secondly, the advocates turned around and said, look, what Chloe's doing is making threats towards other tenants, making threats towards other people. She throws a temper tantrum when she doesn't get anything. Now Chloe's got to work. I mean, look, today she vacuumed. She's got the kitchen almost cleaned up. She's got the dining room cleaned up. She's still got to get her room done. We have a project that's coming up that we both got to work on. We got to tidy up this place just a little bit. I've been meaning to write on Dinky's notes, but, or letter, but I'm just too lazy right now. And I'll explain why. So basically what's happened is, you know, I got family that's pissed. The problem is, oh, there's a deer right there. My cousin, oh, there's two? Ooh, there's more than that. Wow. So my cousin turns around, you know, cousin-in-law, and, you know, they're like, use the mental health card to get out of it if you can save your house. The mental health card is not going to be used because you can't use it when 
that states the lease has been violated. Now, I've tried to explain this in the last video, so I'll explain it again. When the management basically turned around and had the meeting, okay, we all sat there. The problem was sitting there was they basically came up with this idea that was a backdoor deal, okay? Basically, Chloe wasn't there. Chloe's uh, rights were violated, basically. And then, basically, this is, you know... So, basically, what happened is we were there. They all agreed to a training order, and they all left. Me and my advocate were trying to figure out what our next plan was. She says, oh, well, I can't do anything till like, next Friday because I'm so busy. You'll have to coordinate with this lady, uh, as you all know. So, basically, what happened was this lady turns around, and I go in there, and there's just like... Well, uh, the, the, the problem is, is they go around and they're basically turning around, right? And, 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 and you know, basically, uh, they turn around, right? And they, they, they basically, um, sorry, I'm messaging someone. So they, they turn around, right? And, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, you can't do this and can't do that. Thing is, they turned around and they said, look, you went into the meeting. We asked you to keep Chloe out, okay? We knew that that was a backdoor deal. So technically, what we're doing is we're saving our own ass by saying, look, you went in there basically willing to sell Chloe upriver, quote, unquote, keep your house by putting a restraining order. But if you go through the notes you sent me, there's only two incidences where you're scared. Rest of it's all about threats against your family, like dinking Corey and her mom and dad and her step parents and grandparents and the neighbors and Moses Lake and on, on the Moses Lake station and Grant Cillian sector and all this crap, right? But she's like, there's only two spaces in your notes that say you're scared. And we can't go and use the same notes for the previous paperwork, you know, and I, I'm having a hard time trying to say it, you know, but the problem is they said that there's not enough evidence. Chloe throwing a temper tantrum is not considered enough evidence. So she throws a temper tantrum and gets what she wants. Now she's got to work for it, okay? Now here's the problem, all right? Basically, everyone wants to see Chloe gone. Yes, so do I. But the problem is, is I'm going bye-bye because... Chloe turned around and made a freaking ass out of herself by basically feeling guilty, which she should, which I'm not going to hold it against her because her, and we don't want to put guilt on someone who's borderline because they'll just get really violently angry. Trust me, I've read books. So basically what's happened is she turns around and, you know, she regrets it. So I'm sitting here, okay, I'm talking to a family friend that I've known for a lot longer than uh, Dinky and, and not Corey. Corey knows this, that has never met this woman, but this is my little sister Loretta's uh, mom, mom uh, Teresa. Teresa tells me how she's got ideas how to help me, okay? No one else is laying anything on the table. She said, look, your mom was worried about you when you were born, and she worried about you even when she died. This is my turn to help you out. She says, you're disowned. You've been basically disowned and you've been basically abandoned by your entire family your family she said won't do jack shit and i'm not talking about you know dinky or Corey or any of them but she said none of them you know because being who i am and transitioned and everything else and becoming the beautiful woman that i am family didn't want to know me so but uh, her family does and so basically what has happened is is her family said they're going to pull some strings and look up some information and help Get me to the Las Vegas sector, okay? Now, the problem with the Las Vegas sector is I asked for some help from Dinky because we need to store some money away. Store some money away so we can get out of here in October. So I had the budget redone, okay? I can live on ramen for two months until we leave, all right? The problem is, is getting out of here, okay? So Monday morning, I got to make some phone calls. Tuesday morning, um, Tuesday morning, uh, I need to uh, check on uh, uh, the thing, so I gotta go see the manager Monday. I gotta go make these phone calls first, then go see the manager. Can you make sure he doesn't bark? Mm. No, he hasn't had his, his duck dish for dinner. So basically, yeah, he's probably bitching about that. So, 
See, there he goes. He's grumping because he wants it. So, let's get down to the brass tacks, okay? Besides the Picard thing looking badass. Uh, basically, what's happened is, is, um, to make this video short, basically, I can't go and lie on a restraining order, okay? Plus the fact that these people went into this meeting, okay? And I have explained it in well, yesterday's video. They went into the meeting. I tried to explain this to, uh, uh, Dinky. They went into the meeting, and they turned around, and they didn't take notes. They didn't have a pin. No! So, they went into the, the, uh, meeting with notebooks, but they weren't using a pen. They didn't take notes. We were supposed to coordinate by three different people and me. That means a team of four, me and three others, to get things done. And the manager was waiting for these things. Unfortunately, it didn't work because no one was taking notes. They basically said, oh, well, you know, it's all good because we basically turned around and, uh, you know. So we turned around, right? I want to thank Teresa for uh, messaging me. So we turned, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, literally she's got some ideas, you know, how to help. But anyways, we went to the meeting, you know, and they made a backdoor deal, you know, restraining order or else. And, you know, it's illegal. You can't just sit there. The other person, Chloe, can has to face her accuser. Instead, they all basically said, look, we all agreed to keep Chloe out, but we didn't want Chloe there because, you know, then, you know, and, and basically, when I was talking to someone else about this and several others, it's basically smoke and mirrors. They're basically saying, follow this hand here while this hand here is doing something else or vice versa. Basically, it was all smokes and mirrors. They weren't going to plan to basically do anything. So when I went in there the next day to inquire about what we need to do, the advocates didn't know Jack. They're like, huh? Oh, we didn't write down notes. You're going to have to go and see the manager and get it done. So in the meantime, we have a priority one that doesn't include just threats uh, against other tenants or, you know, threats against you because you don't have threats right now. The only thing that they're doing is, you know, doing these things. So, you know, one of the things that Dinky was complaining about, okay, and she has a right to complain. She's my, my family. She's my sister through and through, even though we don't see eye to eye on things, she had a complaint, okay, let me explain the complaint to y'all, Chloe's mom's watching this, well now you know again, okay, complaint goes like this, basically, Chloe goes, right, Chloe's got all these problems, she's harmed me, she's done this and done this, and, you know, she left, and then she ended up back in Moses Lake, and eventually, you know, the whole arrest thing and everything else, and Chloe got me out of it, there's no charges pressed, and then guess what happened? We ended up here, okay? Now, Chloe basically has a problem, okay? In Moses Lake, she did the same thing. Her borderline basically sat there, and when she ran out of food stamps, she'd hoard the food at the food bank. But the food bank there, the food was bad, okay? So I never touched it. But when I wanted something like ramen, I usually had to eat to get flavors that she didn't like, okay? Because she always runs out of her... her teriyaki thing, okay? Now, with me, I've been buying cases and cases of ramen... And then getting loaves of bread from time to time, and peanut butter, and mayonnaise, and like sandwich meats, you know. But Chloe leaves usually my sandwich in there. If you get a, you get a sourdough, or rye, or, um, what's that other one that I, I get? Um, you know, uh, roast beef, and she's not really big of a roast beef fan, or a pastrami. Yeah, she does not like pastrami. You put cheese on it, or... You get, you know, jalapeno, pastrami, or something that she doesn't like that works, okay? But, the point I'm making is, is Chloe basically goes ahead and hoards the food, okay? There's, uh, I, I just basically put my foot down the other day and said, look, you're hoarding the food, okay? It's the 20, uh, I was just saying it the other day, let me just say hypothetically, today's the 20th, okay? 20th of July. I said, look, you can't hoard the food. If you're still eating your ramen bowl things, okay, we got 11 more days in the month. Unless we get evicted because, well, whatever. But, problem is, is the management company needs to know smoke and mirrors. They're not into Monday because the management company expects a restraining order. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because, frankly, the advocacy turned around and said, look, we're giving you a chance to basically live up to Chloe not complaining so you can finish your lease up and get out of there. That's that's all we're doing for you. We're you thank and I've donated many times to this group. I've even donated to the one place that's helping me get um 
set me up with hearing aids. I've got this one lady says I'll do whatever I can resources to get you out and safe. Now that's fine, but the point I'm making is is the family complains about Chloe hoarding food. Well I put my foot down and said, Look, I got hot dogs, I'm eating chili. I have coffee, I'm having my sugar with it. I have coffee, I'm having my milk with it. I'm going to go and buy coffee. I'm going to do it this way, right? So anyways, so basically my family's upset because, you know, they know that Chloe's a freeloading mooch. Now, basically what I've told Chloe lately is I'm not providing razor blades. I'm not providing shaving cream. I'm not providing anything unless you do your chores. And I think Chloe's mom agrees, you know. So Chloe's cleaning this and doing this and vacuuming and everything. And I finally said, look, I said to Chloe the other day, I said, I'm taking care of you. And if I want this to be done, you do it now. I said, you don't wait seven days after you're getting three fish and chip meals out of me and basically ain't do jack shit. I said, I can just... But the problem is, is even if I throw her out, I'm stuck here being homeless. That's the thing. Thing is, no one wants us here, okay? No one wants to deal with Chloe. No one wants to deal with me. And I know Dinky doesn't want to deal with me. And she's got a right to not want to deal with me. See, I mean, I mean... If you're watching this, just have a drink for me, okay? Basically, Dinky's upset, you know, and Corey, that everything's falling through the crap. They're angry that Chloe could turn around and make a threat so devastating that it costs me... What? <sighs> Basically, he makes a threat so severe, okay, that makes me lose my house. Hold on one second. I need to find out what the hell is going on so I can finish this as quickly as possible. Yes, we need one. So basically, what happened is, is, um, yeah, Moppy's been waiting for his, his Alpo. He gets an Alpo every night or some little soft, moisty food. Basically, what happened was, she made this threat, and we're basically told either you get a restraining order, which can't be done, because I can't lie, plus the fact that there's not enough evidence to make it stick. Even the sheriff said, what are you going to do? Yelling and screaming in a grocery store does not constitute a freaking restraining order. Uh, throwing a fit over me going and having fish tacos, for example, at Tina's Tacos, and, and throwing a fit does not constitute a restraining order, okay? Throwing... A temper tantrum and yelling at cars while being completely aggressively angry over something stupid while co toting a suitcase to go to the emergency room yelling at Mo uh, not mostly Friday Harbor cars does not constitute a restraining order okay now my family you know I know everyone's like get rid of her I know uh, teddy bear wants to you know and uh, and uh and dinky stuff the problem is and you know, I, I'm, I'm open-minded to tell you that basically because of the advocate playing the playing field, they basically just threw us all under the bus saying, look, we can't do this. You know, we use this as enough time to get you stabilized so you don't go hang yourself because you're going to lose your house. There is resources. Just go out and find them. Have faith. Do whatever. So what did we do? We did that. Unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't really good. It was too late. But... Anyways, let's just go to the, the part. So, basically, the whole smoke and mirrors thing, they didn't care. They didn't take notes. They didn't do anything. When I asked what we're supposed to do, they said, go see the manager. Well, I want to talk to the manager Friday about this problem, okay? I even told Dinky I was going to do it. It's he ain't in until Monday, so I'm like, great. So, I got to go in. I'm expecting to be evicted faster, and if it is an eviction, I will basically leave faster. But I'm hoping I can finish up my lease and... Because they're not going to renew it without a restraining order. And the advocate said, we're not going to put a restraining order. We basically said that because they basically sat there and they're like, well, because Chloe's complained about noise. Okay, let, let me read this to you so Dinky can understand. Uh, basically, one was noise complaint, okay? Yeah, this is a constitutional for non-compliance, okay? Basically, too loud, okay? The noises were... If you request three or... It says, if you request... Oh, okay. Receiving four or more three-day or ten-day notices in a 12-month period. 
is a non-renewal of the lease, okay? This is for loud noise. That's all they're saying. Loud noise in this one. And because of the loud noise, which they're complaining about then, it says here, Chloe, uh, Chloe, um, Chloe Spice, basically, remember, has made some threats of physical harm against that, yada, 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 so this equals, you know, your trouble, but, so basically, they're not renewing the lease unless there's a restraining order, okay, so technically, I'm just going to basically blurt it out, okay, so family doesn't say, oh, well, you could have hidden it, can't do it, I'm not going to lie on a piece of paper and go to jail for it, okay, the advocates know this is, for them, it was a smoking screen. They came in, they didn't even pay attention, they asked a couple questions, the meeting lasts less than 30 minutes, we all left. My advocate there said, oh, well, we'll see what we can do. The next day, I went there, after seeing my therapist, and my therapist said, you know, pretty much, you need Chloe in your life, because every fucker abandoned me. That's what she said. And, you know, I know, um, that's her opinion, and, you know, that was what she said. And the thing is, is, you know, talking to Tara's ex-roommate, Tara, Tara basically said, look, you know, you might not like the situation, at least, you know, the plan that's in place, you know. I could go to Cleveland, okay, but that's a long shot, you know, a long shot. Literally, it's a long shot. More money, not going to do it, okay. Now, what happened was this. So, basically, I went and talked to Teresa, and I said, look, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to handle this. Life's kind of funny, you know. And I explained my situation. And I said, the only plan I'm thinking about is this. I don't want to be screwed, okay? And so she turned around and she said to me, she said to me that, um, you got to do what you got to do, okay? Now, I live on an island, okay? My lease is up in October or November. I don't know which day it is. I'll check in with the manager on Monday. But the problem is, is no one is giving me a chance to explain over and over. I'm tired of explaining that a restraining order can't be done because of this. Now, family, here, here's the problem with the family, okay? I got advocates that's willing to locate and help me with uh, the projects, okay? I got friends that I might be able to ask, okay? Problem is, is this, all right? I'm going to need every resource I can think of to get off this island without being homeless, okay? And that's where me and Teresa were talking because, frankly, Teresa is a manager and, uh, you know, managed uh, some apartment complexes in Las Vegas, okay? And because she did this, as a woman, she's like, look, I've known you as a little kid, Rita. Basically, you, you, you got to do what you got to do. So, basically, as a sweetheart that she was, she's like, check this place out. Basically, what it is, is it's studio apartments, okay? Here, here's how it works, okay? Studio apartments. Basically, Chloe can drive the damn truck if she has to. I'm hoping she doesn't, but she can, okay? The option is grim, okay? I, there is no housing options. I've checked out an email, and the last... uh three days or so, since I've had the wireless device, you know, since Wednesday, I have emailed every agency in the state, okay? Most of these places, the wait list is too long. One year, two year, three year, even though those turnarounds fast. The problem is, is places like downtown Seattle doesn't have any housing, okay? So I'm looking at other options, okay? I made a battle plan put together tonight, okay? I went through and I recalibrated things, okay? Do you want to hear my theories, okay, for this move? To go to Las Vegas, okay? To go to Las Vegas, these are studios. I was just talking to U-Haul tonight, and they have, because I've rented multiple trucks in several years, they're offering me my free months of uh, storage facilities in Las Vegas, so I won't lose my stuff. The rentals uh, down in Vegas is a lot cheaper than here or in Anacortes to store my stuff, okay? Now, going through the the, the, the fuel mileage model, you know, because I was telling Dinky, I said, I'll, uh, I'll make arrangements, make, uh, send money, basically, so she can hold on to it and then put it on my PayPal card when the time comes, and I can go straight to the U-Haul rental here on the island, pick the truck up, and then just back it up and load it up. And we can have everything packaged up, ready to go. I just got to get boxes, and which is in August, and then I can just pack everything up and then load it in the truck, right, and go through 
everything with a fine comb to see what we're taking and what we're getting rid of, right? That works. Now, the problem is, is I need my family to help me on board by being my moral support because I don't have a home to go to, okay? I mean, let me put it to you this way. Now, Dinky was completely right. You were right, sis. You were literally right. I love you. Basically, what has happened is I went and checked out pricing for camping till uh, my place wakes up here on the island, the new place. I'm sorry, but unless I find my access pass, which is probably in my safe, which my safe key is now missing, which I've been looking to get the key for, and I've asked T Chloe time and time and again to help. My safe key is probably hard to get into. Now, the other safe key, I'm stupid, I left it in the freaking safe because I didn't trust anyone with it. So, one key's missing, a whole bag of keys. The other key, we don't know where it went. And now, I'm sitting here wondering where my key went. You know, my keys went. Now, frankly, to some people, you can sit there and say, well, I'm a dumbass. Yes, I am. I'm a complete and thoroughly dumbass because, frankly... I don't know where my key went. Literally. If I knew where my key went, I wouldn't be asking for my key. I would be sitting here going, hey, here's my key. Instead, my key is missing. I don't even know where my key went, you know. Every time I look around and try to find my key, I don't have my key. And so, frankly, people sit there and say, well, where's your key? There you go. Can't find it. It's just looking there. I can't even find my original iPad. So, technically, that's the other thing we're missing. P things went missing, and I can't find my stuff. People say, oh, Chloe pawned it. No, Chloe didn't. We don't have a pawn shop. No one wants a first-generation iPad anyway. So, basically, i got to go and see if any of these boxes here has my key. Because, frankly, oh, there's my binoculars. I was wondering where those went. But you get the idea, right? So, I'll have Chloe help me find the key. Because i got to find the key, okay? So... And my medical records went missing, so... Okay, so here's the problem. Dinky is completely right. Uh, and Corey was right, too. It leaves a spare key somewhere else. I didn't leave it somewhere. I was stupid. See, I make mistakes. I don't even know where it went. So, basically... Um, what I'm trying to say is... is I really don't want it Chloe driving the truck, but it might have to do to get me so I can live comfortably... Somewhere else, we'll have my stuff in storage because there's no other options, okay? There is no freaking other options. Right now, people sit there and say, oh, well, you know, it is exhausting. It is. It's exhausting waking up in the morning and afraid for the next day because you don't know if the manager is going to just sit there and say you're evicted, eviction proceedings, or your lease is not going to be renewed. I don't care if my lease isn't renewed because... As the advocacy said, it was smoke and mirrors. They just did it to basically throw off them because they weren't paying attention. So, technically, my other person is basically sitting there going, well, you better get in touch with these people so you can coordinate what the next move is. No one knows what the next move is, okay? So, while I'm sitting there, I get an idea from Teresa. Go ahead and check out this place in Las Vegas. Now, it is a senior-only area, so I don't know if Chloe's welcome or not. I hope not because of it, but they, she said disabled people are allowed. So, if disabled people aren't allowed, this idea went out of the toilet. But it was dead on arrival, okay? But if it isn't, it might be just the thing that I need to survive. Because, frankly, we don't know what's going to happen. So, technically, we have to play it by ear. There you go. And so, there you have it. So... Because it smokes and mirrors and the manager demands and demands and demands and the sheriff and the advocates and all these people say that Chloe making threats. You know, Chloe's having mental breaks, okay? If Chloe doesn't get a freaking candy bar, she'll throw a fit. If she um, doesn't get lunch while I'm out, she throws a fit. The problem is, is also is that people don't realize we live on a freaking island, so it's expensive as hell. I mean, literally, I'm, like, looking at things. I'm basically living on ramen, okay? I mean, yeah, I look at sales. Now, I know, I, I mean, some days I complain, okay? And I'll tell you, I, I'm a complainer at times. I complain about chronic things, like why the uh, agencies did what they did. I still can't figure it out, but you know what? It's nothing I can do. I got a therapy appointment coming up. She's willing to work with me on what I'm doing, so technically, I don't know. I just got to make sure I slip her a 20. 
it's all budgeted. I just don't want it basically go without. But my problem is, is we're having a lot of problems. I mean, literally a lot of problems. So to me, um, you know, we have two options, you know, either be homeless or to freaking enjoy, um, Vegas. And right now, Las Vegas is the only option I can think of. I mean, my family was completely right. They said you can't find camping anywhere that isn't going to be costing. I thought, oh, camping's going to be cheap. I have a national parks pass. I can, uh, it can be cheap. Unfortunately, it is not cheap. It's more money than freaking, it's like going to stay in a motel for a couple of days. Instead, you're paying through the freaking nose for the motel. Oh, there's my other ring. Yeah, my, 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 that was the other thing I was saying. My, um, my, um, my, um, Duchess ring that Tara got me went missing, so, I don't know where it went. Oh, well. Can't have everything, though, know, so. Anyways, with that said, you know, I just want to share with you, you know, that the Las Vegas is an idea. It's a, it's basically what they call a quad. Quad home, which means four studios connected up with uh, communal living for um, uh, a TV room, a, ba a kitchen, and uh, a dining room. Now, me, I'd rather basically use the microwave and take my food in the other room, but it also means that as a communal living, you basically don't get caretakers. You got to do all your cleaning yourself. So basically, it works. So you clean your bathroom, you clean your little apartment, you're good. So, you know, it's the only option I can think of. But at the moment, I figured I would share that with you all because of it. So, so Dinky, if you're watching this, I love you dearly. You're right about the camping. It was a stupid idea unless I realized the research and pricing. For the rest of you out there, I'm trying to find that, uh, that key. For the rest of you out there, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. The Picard thing looks really good. Um, but yeah, Las Vegas looks like it's an option, but I don't know if it'll come to fruition. So, oh, before I go, yeah, I want to tell you my, my, my fuel equations real quick. So basically I went ahead and checked out fuel equations. Okay. Now there's four types of trucks. Okay. Four types of trucks. Now, if I'm going to be utilizing the free storage in Las Vegas, which I should, then, um, and I get several months free because I've rented trucks over the last, like, three years, like, five or six times just to move things from my to my storage head, which I know, you know, a storage head isn't that expensive. It's just planning things, okay? So, for a 10-foot truck, for five days rentals, it's 900 bucks with 1,444 miles equivalent. Las Vegas is about 1,240 miles if... You basically, uh, give or take. Now, if you have to go 30 miles additional to go find a, a motel, you're kind of, you know. So basically, you know, and it has 31 gallons for a 10 foot truck. Now, 10 foot ain't gonna work, but I did do the math. At uh, the cost of 12 miles per, uh, 12 miles a gallon, uh, four, uh, four dollars a gallon for 12 miles, you're paying 124 uh, dollars per fuel up. Now, with my plan of financing and saving properly to move, uh, it, it'll be 372 miles per tank up. Now, it'll take 300, uh, sorry, it'll take, uh, about 1300 miles is what rougher, rough guess. It'll take 3.4 fill ups to go from here. I'm taking 40 miles off because the ferry. So 40 miles off is different, okay? So it's 3.4 Phillips. Now, if you go with a 15 foot truck or 20, by the way, the engine's the same, by the way. The only difference is price. The 15 footer is uh, 948, and the 20 footer is 1,043 dollars. You still the miles is the same. You get 1,444 miles. But those two trucks has 40 gallon tanks at 10 miles per hour. And four dollars a gallon rough for take, depending on if I'm leaving in October or November. Uh, basically, it'll cost $160 to fill it up, and it'll go 400 miles, or give or take. So, it takes about 3.3, 3.3 fill-ups. All right. Now, to get the big beast like we did the last time, which we're going to probably get the big beast, but the, the deal with the big beast is, um, 
It also depends on grade, where you're driving. Now, if you're going up a mountain and down a mountain, it's different. But on flat roads, it's a lot easier to handle. Now, you got to load this truck properly. That's the other problem. I don't know how to load a U-Haul. So, technically, i got to go look up the uh, the balancing issues for a truck. So, basically, the, uh, the, the 26-foot beast is a uh, rental is $1,184. For a five day rental with 1,444 miles. It's gas tank is 57 gallons. Okay. Now 57 gallons at 10 miles per hour. You're going to probably go about 570 miles on a tank up. Each fill up is 228 bucks, which is fine. So you need about 2.2 fill ups if you're driving directly to, um, straight there to, um, you know, so, you know, to do that. So, technically, you know, I just thought I would um, uh, share that with you all, you know, because, frankly, I know family's getting tired of my questions and asking. So, technically, I thought I would just share that with you all, that it's uh, kind of a, a stumper, you know. So, um, basically, you know, so you all know, you know, restraining order can't be issued because they won't allow it. That That's one I wanted to say, so, you know, but if I can find someone to drive the truck, and I was talking to a family friend uh, about this, um, uh, you know, uh, Teresa and, and others, you know, the problem is, is you got to look at what resources you have and utilize your resources, okay? Now, I know my family's worried about me, but, you know, they took all their vacay time anyway, so technically I can't ask them to drive from, you know, here to Las Vegas, you know. To them, this is like another pokey-pokey pipe dream type thing, but it isn't. I mean, literally, they don't understand that my lease will be not researched without a, re without a restraining order. And basically, what we did was we backdoored the, backdoored the meeting without Chloe there to defend herself. So technically, they said, look, you guys basically did a backdoor deal. We supported it, but we were just basically doing something to get them off your back. And now that they're off your back, you can live your life until they tell you you either have to vacate after the 27th of this month, or they'll let you go until your lease is up. Anyway, look at it, that's it. Because it was a 10-day comply or vacate, and you got to comply, and Chloe doesn't need to make noise anymore, you're fine. So we're not putting restraining order because we know there's not enough evidence. And that's the thing, you have to have evidence. Now, you know, they said it themselves, Chloe throwing a fit in a grocery store is not evidence. Chloe demanding this and that isn't evidence. Chloe making threats, you know, um, against neighbor isn't evidence. Now, because the police basically said that I was trying to basically go get her help, and, uh, you know, and, and because I had no phone at the time, then they basically said, look, you know, you were going to go and get help. You could have just called the crisis team, but they would have said, call us. And when we came out, talked to Chloe, we told Chloe not to hold you against your will after the second time, because Chloe's not, doesn't want to be hospitalized at the time. So they, they're like, that isn't considered abuse. Now, you know, these bruises, you know, the ones that I have, I got one on my leg, I think, right now. I keep hitting my damn coffee table, and, you know, and so, because I have my coffee table, and, you know, Chloe's like, are you okay? And I'm going, no. So, technically, Chloe realized, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm clumsy, but, you know, the problem is, is, you know, my, my family really needs to realize that we can't just go ahead and lie on a form. I mean, literally, we can't do that, and... You know, we can't just go use papers from the past to make, you know, get things moving because it doesn't work that way. I mean, literally everything they said, so, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you know, my, my family says, so oh, you're stuck with her. Well, literally, I'm not stuck with her because after October or November, I basically am unstuck with her because I don't have a home to go to. And what's really upsetting is the researchers, all these people basically, they turned around. Okay, let me tell you this. Turned around. You know, and they're like, restraining order issue? No, it's not an issue because we can't issue it. Then they're like, dude, we really can't handle this. Well, the thing is, is, you know, the problem is, is we can't make up something and pull a feather out of our hat and call it macaroni. I mean, it's impossible. So to me, I just want to say I love all of you. You guys aren't at fault. That dinky, I know, feels like I'm like Gypsy Rose Blanchard who... Fell through the cracks because her mom was Munchausen here. 
thing is, is it is a hassle. I mean, you've got advocates. One advocate wants to basically a restraining order. The other two just basically said, watch the birdie over here. We're going to do this while this hand's doing this. I mean, literally, that's all they were doing is a smoke mirror. They basically did their thing and then said, look, we just bought some time. Well, I was really thinking this would come down the pipe at the time. But they're like, look, you know, you can't do this. I mean, my therapist is like saying it's uh, an empty battle because, you know. And my therapist is want to call the APS lady. And then she's like, look, well, you know. I mean, the APS letter, as I said, they basically stated, uh, case closed, don't contact us again type thing. It's because... They can't do anything. I'm not vulnerable. Now, I know my family's like, well, you are. No, I'm not. The state stated I am not vulnerable. If I was vulnerable, they would have done something. But because I take care of myself, I cook, I clean, and I'm not 60 years old or, you know, this, that, or the other, then I don't qualify. There's like five, five criteria to meet to make vulnerability. I don't meet any of them. Notice just Chloe. So, I even asked about it. Is Chloe vulnerable? You can take Chloe away. Nope. So, basically, you know, so what I'm doing right now is, is, uh, I'm doing this video to let you all know that this is exhausting and I'm tired of talking about it. Okay, there's nothing we can do unless Chloe basically goes to punch me in the face, pulls a knife out, and threatens my life. Or, you know, other things that they're not going to hold it against her. The stuff that happened in Moses Lake's in Moses Lake, they can't use that against it. It's too long past, okay? Literally, there's nothing that can be done, alright? So to me, I'm trying to live contently so I can figure out what to do next. Uh, people sit there and go, well, you know, you're, you're this. the thing is, is yeah, being homeless is a form of abuse, but... The problem is, is people don't realize that I'm living with someone who basically did it to themselves. So Chloe basically, and let me put it to you this way, tonight. in the meeting, okay, I was talking to the advocates, and I was talking to the other advocates, I was talking to my friend Teresa. Teresa even agreed, yeah, they could just say, here's a pen, you're signing yourself off the lease. Done deal. Instead, we run a restraining order. And the thing is, I can't issue one because nothing's been against me right now. The neighbors can issue one. But as they said, there's not enough evidence. The police went to the door, knocked on the door of the neighbor, and said, you, there are rumors, there's threats against you. She went to the manager. The manager came here and said, you know, they're meeting, you're going. Well, the manager was pissed Chloe wasn't there, but the advocates had a plan to keep Chloe out of it because they wanted a backdoor deal. And then when the back deal door went through, they decided to basically change course and go, oh, yeah, uh, you backdoored this deal, it's kind of illegal, Chloe's supposed to face, you know, her, her trials, you didn't give it. They basically turned a blind eye and threw us all under the bus, basically, and said, well, you know, we can't do anything. And then they also offered to help me with, uh, some, some supplies, you know, to get me by, and they're like, oh, you don't get these supplies, you know, so, to me, I'm like, I'm done with these people. When I saw Dinky the other day, I'm like, I'm done with these fucking people. These fucking people are stupid-ass morons. They're literally stupid-ass morons. They are uh, under the scum of the universe, okay? So, what I'm trying to do with Dinky is, and, and Dinky, if you're watching this, I'm trying to freaking avoid talking about this to you, okay? All I'm asking right now is, do we set up a plan to go to Las Vegas? Because we're out of options. I mean, unless the advocates... Which they're not going to help me. They didn't have a t plan to help me. They had a priority the other day, basically, that basically one girl got supposedly raped and her kid was raped and something to do with her and her kid being completely abused or something. Priority level one. Me and mine's roommate making threats against others. That's not a high priority. So, you know, you can move your mosey along, you know. Mosey along, little doobie. Or do, do, doby, you know. Get along, little doggy. You know, meaning cow, you know, in Australia. But that's that's how I felt. I felt like, you know, it was useless, you know. So my advocates and everything is different. And I'm done. I'm literally done talking to these people because they're fucking useless. Now, people sit there and say, you know, like my, like I said, my Therapist said I shouldn't trust anyone in my family because they're untrustworthy. If they understood, they'd be supporting me. My family supports me. The problem is my therapist thinks I'm abandoned. The only one I have is Chloe and her. And the advocates are just 
Here is a, I mean, I spoke to her that in, in, in an email. She she basically said, "You got your Skype phone up. We we'll talked." And my 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 therapist said, "Look, they basically threw you all under the bus just to use this card and saying it because it's a, uh, a, a complier vacate." I mean, literally, they they were going to use the 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 this this card that said domestic violence. But the thing is, is the advocates turned around right after they used that card and left. The next morning, they said. We can't use it because there's no proof. We went through all your notes. No fucking proof. Yet, I've told them everything. And they're like, well, Chloe throwing, you know, temper tantrum, all this crap. It's not considered, you know. And so, technically, to me, you know, I just need to basically plan care. Uh, so, hold on. Is there a problem? So basically, you know, uh, sometimes you get irritated, you know, uh, how loud she is. But basically, the bottom line is before I go game tonight, because I spent all freaking day in front of the computer coordinating, you know, this plan and working and figuring this out. And again, this is my bipolar side. So if anyone wants to know, I'm I'm actually in my manic stage. I can't find my ring though. That that's what sucks. Uh. But anyways, I can't find my ring, and my ring disappeared, and I think someone stole my ring, and I don't know where it is, but I also think someone stole my my safe key, because I can't get my my access pass, so everything in my safe has gone bye-bye, so I don't know where it went, you know, so, you know, and so I'm looking for my keys. I might check the, under the couch, and in that area, if I don't find it, then well, but anyway, same with my, my, um, my ring. But anyways, back to the story. So, basically, all you out there, all you loving uh, people, I just want to say thanks for tuning in. And, uh, like I said, the any order ain't going to happen. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not doing anything that's against the law. Fortunately, basically, you know, we got evicted. Or we're going to be evicted or we're not going to have a re lease renewed. I mean, literally, these people have plans. They just threw me under the bus, basically, because they, they just don't want to deal with it. I mean, literally, what Dinky said was no one wants to deal with Chloe. The fact of the matter is no one wants to deal with transgender people on this island. I mean, literally, they've been begging me to go to Oregon. Now, as you all know, the whole incident with Dinky and I losing a somewhat family relationship happened because some jackass told me to go to Oregon to be close to them. Fortunately, at the time, it didn't work. Now, you know, with Chloe's threats and everything else, there's not, uh, I don't want to be a burden to them. So that's why I said, well, you know, if I, I plan this savings money program, then I'm going to have to go to freaking, you know, you know, um, the Vegas. I mean, that's the only option unless I want to freaking live in a tent for six months while waiting for a new place, which I'm number three on the list. It could be two years. The, the people on this island, they don't want to leave. So with me, I'm just going to basically pack up, you know, load up my stuff and decide what I'm keeping and what I'm not. And I will decide when I'm going through stuff. I might just fill a lot of stuff up in the dumpster. I know Teresa said it's time to uh, purge, but I don't really like the idea of purging. I mean, literally, to me, it sucks. I mean, I am a gamer girl. I'm not giving up my games. I'm not giving up certain things. But, you know, there's a lot of junk that I've accumulated from airing, you know. I mean, I could get rid of some of the coffee tables and end tables because to me they're pretty useless. I mean, we're using them for what? Not much. And they're flimsy. They're like stuff my mom bought that were cheap. They're, they'll fall apart, you know. I mean, we got some falling apart junk. And to me, it's like I'm, I mean, I had a couple end tables break on the move here. So to me, it's like... And if this broke and that broke, that's fine. Clear the storage shed out, that's fine. It's just, you know, but... Anyways, for all of you out there, you got your idea. I hope I don't have to explain this again about the smokes and mirrors. I'm getting tired of it because, frankly, it's just tiring and boring and, and, and crap some that, you know, we all have to live. And, frankly, I'm not happy about the outcome, but I'm not sad either. My thing is, is... You know, uh, uh, there is a way to survive. And frankly, you know, like my, you know, if we can pull this off properly and they do take uh, disabled people, I'll be going there for my own safety. Uh, yeah, so otherwise, there's not many other options that I can 
think of. So, with that said, everyone, you know, uh, I want to try to get into some gaming tonight and to zone out and upload this vid and relax. So, um, I will let you know what goes on Sunday. I mean, I don't have much to report. Sunday's a loaf-off day, but Chloe's got cleaning to do because she's behind schedule a bit. And, you know, for me, she wants to make, uh, try to do her, her, sort, her, you know, try to make me somewhat happy, but at the same time, she knows we're being kicked out. So, you know, and, you know, you got people that sit there and say, well, she did this on purpose. No, she basically has a... Personality disorder, basically, that turns around, basically, she can be one minute, well, one minute, or one second happy, and the next minute, she's a raging lunatic, kind of anger, so, technically, your mom's like, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, Asperger's, no, Asperger's wouldn't be doing this, but, you know what, I don't care, my main thing is, is Chloe, basically, has caused me to have, to go homeless, so, for everyone out there, Chloe's been spouting off that Chloe's mom doesn't care if I go homeless or not. Well, that's the case, Chloe's like, fuck her. Uh, you know, unless she's basically supporting me on my next adventure, you know, Chloe's attitude was fuck her. Basically, because, you know, Chloe knows that her mom has ideas, and Chloe doesn't agree with them. With me, I think getting her in the middle helps fine, but the problem is it ain't gonna happen in the state, and it ain't gonna happen in Oregon, and frankly... You know, it won't happen in Arizona, but it could happen in another um, state. So, you know how that is. So, anywho, I just thought I'd share that with you all, um, you know, but until we can figure out a solid uh, plan, I'm just going to go and say, you know, Unless family or someone gives me some solid advice, the thing I gotta say to the rest of you is to thank Teresa for giving me a call, letting me call her on uh, my Skype phone and talk to her about the problems because she's agreeing, you know, they should just sign her off the lease and I can keep my place. But they're making it too complicated, which means it's a new thing for her because she's been in the management business for so long. She never thought that, you know, whatever. So to me, I'm just going to basically wing this and see how it plays out. So, because the management company was told that there would be a restraining order and it's not going to happen because, frankly, it can't happen because these idiots won't deal with it. There's not enough evidence. So while everyone sits there and thinks, well, what is abuse? That's the thing. Their Their thoughts are verbal abuse has to be Direct threats towards me. I haven't had any lately. Long in the past, but the thing is, is I haven't had any lately, okay? Mostly when I get afraid of Chloe, it's when Chloe's spewing crap against other people. I'm more afraid of the outcome of being homeless. And I keep telling her to pipe it or shut up. She's like raging lunatic mad, you know, like, you know, well, basically explosive temper to the point of no return. And so, to me, I have to basically keep quiet. But lately, she's been going outside of town and screaming up the top of her lungs when she's angry. So, hopefully that stays the way it is. Maybe she could do the same in Vegas if she goes that course just you now. But, like I said, unless I can find uh, my, my caseworker that can find a driver, you know, we're basically going to be either homeless on this island or homeless off this island and that's it so technically we have to look at all the options or i'll be homeless i mean you know my problem started when i tried to get chloe to sign herself off the lease several months ago problem is it fell through things happened life flared up and that was it and then the manager blames me for it but you know what the manager doesn't realize i'm living in hell i'm living in too much hell and right now i'm just living content I mean, I don't know what it is, but my therapist said, well, you're in your manic phase, which means you're a mania, which means he'll do more research than anything else. And then when you hit your depressive phase, he'll sleep more. Thing is, I haven't hit my depressive phase, and that's the thing is, I, I wasn't even depressed, even with this whole thing going on with the management company. Management company didn't phase me. It was like, you know, my mood was, I'm on my fuck it stage, which means fuck it, you know, it's like, when Dinky said to me tonight something interesting about exhaustion, you know, I was like, uh, to me, I was like, fuck it, you know, I, I had soup, you know, have a drink for me, you know, I can tell Dinky's probably having a beer or something, but, you know what I mean, it's like, fuck it, you know, there's nothing I can do, I mean, there's nothing I can do, so I don't even dwell on it, it's like, if I'm gonna be homeless, at least my family will know, if my family doesn't care, well, pfft, oh well, fuck it, 
to me, it doesn't matter anymore because, frankly, I'm tired of the point of, you know, and, you know, I have to make sure if this plan goes according to plan to move and it really does get off the ground that I got to make sure the finances are there to make sure that it is basically planned properly, which my family will help me out with. Then I don't have the problem of not worrying about um, that because if the, the funds aren't there and I put it in the family's care, which I trust my family with, and it's not there, I'm royally screwed, basically. I'm going to be basically homeless because of it, and I don't want to be homeless, literally. So that's why I'm very, you know, being very careful right now. So I'm trying to plan out my, my thoughts. You know, now if I can find my key to my safe, I'd be a lot happier, too. And a belly full of meat, so... With that said, everyone, I'm a little tired, so I'm going to have some coffee and uh, play my game and try out the new one and do a tutorial, see how it works, see if I like it, and, you know, maybe it'll be something worthwhile. So with that said, everyone, please, please, please um, uh, add and subscribe, please post comments, please leave feedback, suggestions, hit that like and subscribe button, it's wholesome fun even for the family, including your bunnies. Hit that bell notification, it's new content all the time when I upload a vid, you'll know about it. Um, so, look for another video soon. Uh, Admiral Skies log out. This transmission ends now.